The Impact World Championship. What is going on at this point with the Impact World Championship? Well, of course, this past week on Impact Wrestling, we kind of got a better idea about where we're heading when it comes to the Impact World Championship due to the big return, of course, of Rich Swan weeks after his retirement speech, after Eric Young attacked him for the second time, Rich Swan made his return to Impact Wrestling. Now, this just comes a week after Eric Young became the Impact World Champion by defeating Eddie Edwards in, let's say, controversial circumstances, hit him with a hockey mask, then attacked him after the match. Eddie Edwards this past week on Impact Wrestling wasn't on the show. He was selling an injury sustained by uh, Eric Young in their match last week. So we had Eric Young open the show this past week on Impact Wrestling. After defeating Eddie Edwards, of course, to become the new Impact World Champion last week, Eric Young decided to grace us with his presence and cut a promo. Eric Young reinforced that his plan to attack Rich Swan, get under the skin of Eddie Edwards, and then eventually become the Impact World Champion was all by design, which, of course, I absolutely love. Because there's one thing about having a character that's this devious, insane lunatic, but there's something about a guy that does fringe on the edge of lunacy, but it's all part of a plan, and it's all by some sort of crazy design. That, for me, is a real villain right there. That's a real character. I've referenced the Joker before in The Dark Knight, Heath Ledger's unbelievable portrayal of him, and that what elevated the Joker in that film from just being your run-of-the-mill movie villain was that he was intelligent. It was all by design. He was four or five steps ahead, and he would plan to get caught, and he would plan even to lose on certain occasions to get what he wants. And that's kind of what Eric Young has done here, and the the direction that they're taking this character. He is the world-class maniac, but he's, he's an intelligent one. And I think that's a real, it's a nuanced point, but I think it really does add a lot of depth to this Eric Young character. So I'm a big fan of that. And I've done enough videos at this point talking about how much of a fan I am of Eric Young and his work recently on Impact Wrestling. I think he's just been absolutely tremendous to be honest best performer in the company right now best heel in the company just he's on fire but during his promo this week alicia edwards comes out interrupts of course eddie edwards wife comes out calls him a coward for injuring people including her husband eric young alicia told ey that she's been through it all with eddie and that sooner rather than later eddie edwards will be back and he will reclaim his world championship Alicia also told Eric Young that because of his post-match attack last week, Eddie Edwards can't even hold their daughter right now. Whoa. They were pulling on the heartstrings there, weren't they? They were really going for the emotional, Eric Young is an evil, sadistic, you know what. And Eddie Edwards is the ultimate underdog babyface, the former world champion. I, at the time, I mentioned when Eric Young won the world championship that I thought it was a good move for Eddie Edwards because... The thing is, with those underdog babyfaces, they can only be champion for so long. What makes them so popular is actually the chase. The chase for trying to capture the world championship is kind of the big deal when it comes to those kind of characters and those underdog babyfaces. So having Eddie Edwards back in that role of chasing the world championship isn't a bad thing at all. It isn't a bad thing at all. Now, Alicia Edwards also said that being the sick individual that Eric Young is, he... uh, he, you know, he's awful, he's terrible. And Eric Young at this point, again, this was such a great character point by Eric Young here that I loved, is that he just stared at her right into her eyes, didn't blink, and he just looks dead in her eyes and says, I don't care. Again, brilliant, brilliant. That's that's the heel I want to see in professional wrestling. And you can't, everyone can't be that heel and everyone can't pull off being that heel, to be honest, that kind of character. Eric Young pulls it off. Eric Young not only pulls it off, but he's believable, he's credible, he's into this character, he's invested in this character. I, as a viewer, I don't know, people will say, well, if you love him so much and you're a big fan of him and this character, then maybe he's not a heel, maybe it's not working. But again, I argue that to say that when you watch great films, and that's what I always compare professional wrestling to because it is a show, it is a TV show, it is a film. I think that in any great film, if there's a great villain, you know that you're not meant to like him and you know that he's the bad guy and you know that the good guy is going to win. But at the end of the film, you go, man, that was such a good villain. That was such a good villain. 
And like I said, the Joker, Darth Vader, the Terminator, all of those guys, you know they're the bad guys and you know they're going to lose and at points you want them to lose, but it doesn't stop you at certain points in the film or in the TV show going, man, that 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 character is great. This is really great because I can't stop watching and I'm invested in this segment. So that's what I get when I watch this Eric Young character. Well, Tommy Dreamer comes out and he announces a match between them for later tonight. And he said it's going to be old school rules. So we're going to get Eric Young versus Tommy Dreamer. It's a non-title match, old school rules match, which essentially means there are no disqualifications, no count out, anything goes. Extreme rules, whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it. It's old school rules. It's hardcore, etc. So I enjoyed the match between Eric Young and Tommy Dreamer. Look, Tommy Dreamer at this point in his career... Um, and he was never the most finesse wrestler anyway, was he? You're never going to get arm drags, uh, knock down, drop toe hold, leapfrog, reverse, drop kick. You're never, you're never going to get that with Tommy Dreamer. But at this point in his career, when he does do the occasional match for Impact Wrestling, it's fine. And it serves a purpose. The purpose being that Tommy Dreamer is a name. So if you beat Tommy Dreamer, you take out Tommy Dreamer, it, it benefits his opponent. He still does have some form of a name. He's still recognizable to whoever's watching on Access. So that's why he's still there. And he is still as a producer. I think his producing work for Impact Wrestling recently has been unbelievable. What a credit. What a credit to the company Tommy Dreamer has been in terms of behind the scenes recently. His work on producing the Wrestle House segments, which he was a big driving force behind. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And he must be credited for that. No one can question Tommy Dreamer's mind for the business and his... One, his desire to still be doing what he's doing today, but also what he can offer from a production point of view, what he can offer from a talent point of view and from a, just a pure knowledge. I mean, he's been everywhere. He's been in ECW behind the scenes. He's been in WWE behind the scenes. He was involved in talent relations as well. Tommy Dreamer has a wealth of experience, so he offers so much more than just being the legend that occasionally comes out and works on TV. Support for Wrestle News 365 is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Now, Manscaped, for all of my UK fans out there, Manscaped just launched in the UK. Over here in the United Kingdom, we have gone for years and years and years without using the right tools for the job. But now you can be one of the first men in England to experience their life-changing product. But it's not just limited to all of the great fans over here in the UK. This offer goes worldwide. So all of my friends over in America and around the world that are listening to this, this offer still does apply for you. You can still use our code. Uh, but I've got to tell you a quick story first. Now, there have been so many times, right? I'm a guy. Uh, you gotta, you got to groom down there, fellas, right? That's the most important thing. you got to keep yourself trimmed. you got to keep yourself proper. And uh, a lot of the time, I've been guilty of this, of using the wrong tools for the job. I've had incidences, I'm not afraid to say it, where things have been nicked, snagged, or in fact cut down there because I wasn't being careful enough and using the right equipment. Now, that just shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen. You don't want to be worrying about cutting yourself down there. Do you know how painful that is? I can tell you, it hurts quite a lot. And I wish... And hope to God it never happens to me again and it won't happen to me ever again because I'm using Manscaped products. That's why Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. The Manscaped engineering team has perfected the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created. Big statement, but it's absolutely true. They have just released the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0 in the UK. It's also available around the world as well. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. So those cuts and snags that I was telling you about before are a thing of the past. And let me tell you, when I tell you this is premium, I mean premium. The battery will last up to 90 minutes so you can get a longer, perfect shave. And not only that, you don't want to be cutting yourself and trimming yourself in the all over the bathroom, getting hair all over the place. That's just disgusting. The lawnmower has a waterproof technology that allows you to groom in the shower, so no more mess. And one of the coolest features, one of my favorite features about the lawnmower is the LED light which illuminates grooming areas for a closer and more precise trimming experience. So you can shave longer, you can shave more precisely, and you can shave in the shower. What more did I need to tell you? They've also upgraded to a 7000 RPM motor with quiet stroke technology and 
let's not forget about the charging stand. You can show off your mower loud and proud because this intelligently designed stand is a convenient charging dock powered by USB. So, if you are listening to me speak right now, I want you to experience it firsthand for yourself. Let's get that bush to tush clean and you can get 20% off and free shipping. Yeah, you heard me right there. 20% off and free shipping. All you have to do is use the code 365 wrestle at manscaped.com make your testies their besties that's 20 percent off and free shipping not only are you getting 20 percent off you're getting free shipping as well with the code 365 wrestle at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code 365 wrestle your balls will thank you so i enjoyed this match uh, at the start of the match, Dreamer attacks Eric Young with a kendo stick. Dreamer then used a steel chain across the eyes of Eric Young. We had Eric Young try to deliver a pile driver on the exposed concrete, but Tommy Dreamer counted out of it with a back body drop. Eric Young sent Dreamer flying off the top, narrowly missing a pile of steel chairs. Dreamer managed to stop the onslaught momentarily with a cutter. He then hit an Irish whip onto a steel garbage can, followed by a DDT for a close two count. Eric Young then cracked the hockey mask off the skull of Dreamer, followed by a sick pile driver for the victory. Now, again, I again, I enjoyed this match. It served the purpose of continuing to have people for Eric Young to take out. He's taken out Rich Swan, he's taken out Eddie Edwards, and now he's taken out Tommy Dreamer. It's a bit like the Randy Orton situation in WWE on Monday Night Raw. When you really want to real really get these guys over, you have to just take people out, and that's exactly what Eric Young's doing. I also enjoyed the fact that the finish was pretty much exactly the same as the finish to the Impact World title match last week when Eric Young beat Eddie Edwards. So they called back to using the hockey mask. That is going to be, I guess, Eric Young's go-to weapon. So I enjoyed that, and I'm a big fan of a power driver. If a power driver can be done safely and properly, I'm a big fan of it, as long as it's not a flip power driver because we just see them to death at this point. But again, I enjoyed the match. I thought it was a fun TV main event and it served the purpose of continuing this momentum of this Eric Young devious evil character. So I had no problem with that. But the big thing happened was after the match. After the match, Eric Young attempted to fully put Tommy Dreamer on the shelf like he did to Rich Swan and Eddie Edwards when none other than Rich Swan himself made his way to the ring on crutches. Swan saves Dreamer and sends Eric Young retreating up the ramp, attacking him with his crutch. And we had Rich Swan and Eric Young stare each other down as Impact Wrestling went off the air. Now, I did have conflicting feelings about Rich Swan's return, I must say. Too early. I, I felt like it was too early. Only a couple of weeks ago, Rich Swan is retiring. And during that retirement speech, he was attacked by Eric Young. So there is so much to unpack there. Not only was he retiring because of the attack and he needs to go home and recover, but there he gets attacked after that. So he's got to recover on top of the recovery. So I felt, and I said this a couple of weeks ago, that could Rich Swan get involved in the Eric Young, Eddie Edwards match? And I thought it was too early then. We're only a couple of weeks removed and I still think it's too early. What I will say is I do sympathize with them that they're running out of time, I suppose. What Bound for Glory at this point is five or six weeks away. This to me is going to be the main event of Bound for Glory for the World Championship. So they've got to shoot the angle soon because they're going to run out of time. So I'd hoped that they were going to double down on this even more. The Eric Young Rich Swan deal will have Rich Swan back in the hospital or something like that or at home and have Eric Young do a... Steve Austin, Triple H style home invasion. I think that'd have been a lot of fun or attack Rich One in the hospital. I think maybe they'd have considered doing a segment like that. The only problem is, is that that is so hard to shoot during a pandemic. The hospital part, I think they could have done something at the house. Maybe, I mean, they just rented a house out to the wrestle house. They could have used a bedroom or something like that, but they didn't decide to go in that direction. I thought that could have been a sort of fun, iconic segment that they can go back to. Again, I, I, I think this 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 angle with Eric Young and Rich Swan, I think it's brilliant. I, I do think it's brilliant. And from the moment they shot the angle at Slammiversary, I've said that I think the angle is brilliant. And I'm a big, big fan of it. I, I think Rich Swan has absolutely stepped up here. I thought his retirement promo was phenomenal. I thought the way he sold the injury at Slammiversary and he sold the injury during the retirement speech, I thought was brilliant. We know how great Eric Young's been recently. Uh, 
So I thought it was great. What I will say is during this attack on Eric Young post-match, Rich One did sell the injury still. He was hobbling around. He had a cast on or a boot on his foot and he was limping around and he kind of had to fall into the ring and he was on crutches. So at least they're trying to keep up that legitimacy of, oh, he's still got the injury, etc. The only thing I will say about that is now as we're heading into Bound for Glory, there can't be any physicality really between Rich One and Eric Young. From Eric Young's point of view, Rich One can continue attacking him with with a crutch. But how does Eric Young get in any offense now? Because if he's this world-class maniac that we know that he is and they've executed really well, he would just do what he's done twice already and that's attack the injured ankle. And if he attacks the injured ankle, Rich One has already had to retire, remember? So if he attacks the ankle, he's going to be screwed once again. So Eric Young at this point... From a logistical storyline point of view, he can't he can't attack Rich Swan because if he does, Rich Swan is going to be you know one legged. So I I think that might be an issue. How do they how do they do that? Because Eric Young got attacked this week. Every time he's attacked Rich Swan so far, he's been one step ahead. What as we go into Bound for Glory now, Eric Young's not going to be one step ahead. The whole point is that he's a genius. He's a world class maniac. He's going to try and attack Rich Swan from behind going forward inside the impact zone, right? So how does Eric Young get in any offense now about ruining the match at Bound for Glory? It's difficult. It's difficult because he would and should just go for the injured ankle. That would put Rich One out for longer and he definitely wouldn't have the match at Bound for Glory. And as I mentioned, it hasn't been announced, but the match at Bound for Glory is going to be Eric Young versus Rich Swan. It's going to be, I think, for the World Championship. And it's it's the obvious main event. It's the hottest angle in Impact Wrestling right now. Also, as well, Eric Young is front and center on every Bound for Glory advertisement. I've mentioned it quite a few times now, but that advert that they've shot, that promo for Bound for Glory with Eric Young in the prison, playing multiple characters and being in an interrogation room, being inside the prison cell, it's one of the best produced things that I think Impact Wrestling has ever done. It would stand up on any TV program. Go, go, you know, don't consider professional wrestling. If that was a promo for a TV series, you'd go, man, that looks good. The production quality is really high on that. And I think Eric Young does a great job in that. And credit to everyone that shot and produced that because it's really, really good. So we're going to get Rich Swan versus Eric Young for the world title at Bound for Glory. There has been a topic of discussion as, is Rich Swan ready for that spot? Is he ready for a world championship main event in the biggest show of the year? I know in the comments in some of my videos that some people don't think that Rich Swan is ready. I would disagree. I think that his promo during that retirement speech showed that he is ready. Uh, Maybe Rich One versus Eric Young might not be to everyone's cup of tea and they might think that Rich One isn't a big enough star for that, but you've got to try. And if an angle gets hot, that's how you elevate someone to the next level. And I think that's what Impact Wrestling are trying to do here. So I do think Rich One is ready. I think another thing you have to consider is how does Eddie Edwards factor into this? Eddie Edwards was the former world champion. His wife comes out on Impact this past week and says he's still going after Eric Young and he's going to come back and take the World Championship. So Eric Young versus Rich Swan is the main event for Bound for Glory, but Eddie Edwards is going to be involved in this feud somehow. He still needs something to do. He's a former World Champion. He was a World Champion until a week ago, front and center of the company. So how does Eddie Edwards factor into this? As I mentioned, we're five or six weeks away from Bound for Glory. Eddie Edwards is still heavily featured in. His wife is now involved. So the rumor was, Fightful reported it, that Ken Shamrock versus Eddie Edwards at one point was penned in to be the main event of Bound for Glory for the Impact World Championship. Maybe that match isn't happening now. Maybe Ken Shamrock and Eddie Edwards is off the table. Maybe Eddie Edwards is involved in this. How does he move into this World Championship match? Do they make it a triple threat? Eric Young, Rich Swan versus Eddie Edwards? I don't think so. To me, that doesn't make a lot of sense. For me... The match should be Eric Young versus Rich Swan, But then again, you have to factor in maybe Eddie Edwards needs something to do. He he can't be sitting off bound for glory. He was the former world champion and he won the title at the second biggest show of the year. So he needs to be involved. So perhaps Eddie Edwards does eventually get his rematch against Eric Young on an upcoming episode of Impact. He comes back, has his title match against EY for the world title. And that's when maybe Ken Shamrock returns and attacks him. And then we go off into the Ken Shamrock, Eddie Edwards feud as we head into Bound for Glory. Ultimately, I think the thing to remember here is there's a lot of moving parts in this one. 
It certainly will be interesting. And I still think we're going to get Eric Young versus Rich Swan as the main event for Bound for Glory for the world title. I wouldn't rule out Ken Shamrock versus Eddie Edwards completely, but time is ticking. Time is ticking, and I'm sure we'll find out a lot more in the upcoming weeks on Impact Wrestling. But of course, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on Rich One's return to Impact Wrestling? What are your thoughts on the potential Bound for Glory main event between Eric Young and Rich One? How does Eddie Edwards feature into this? Are we going to get Eddie Edwards versus Ken Shamrock at Bound for Glory? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I'll be sure to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys on this channel, talking about Impact Wrestling. If you've enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button as well. It really does help us out here on YouTube. Go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos before. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.